Hi, good morning everyone. This is Dr. Nikki Christopoulos here. Just thought I would get in some questions that you guys all sent us online so that we can get these in before I start my busy clinic today, okay? Um, so let's start. Ah, when is the best time for a mommy makeover? So this is a great question. Um, having recent, relatively recently a baby myself, um, I can tell you that the best time for a mommy makeover is when you are near your pre-baby weight or as close as you think you're going to get to your pre-baby weight. Um, you have some help with the child care, whether that's, you know, a year after the baby or six months after the baby because it is a recovery after a mommy makeover. Um, depending on what combination of procedures you are doing, because that's what a mommy makeover is, it's usually a combination of procedures. Um, usually a breast and a tummy tuck, but it can be really anything that any mom wants to fix after she had um, her children. Uh, the other most important thing is that you have to be done obviously breastfeeding. Um, we usually prefer that you have completed your breastfeeding at least six months prior. Um, that gives you time for your hormones to adjust, for everything to get back to normal, for your breasts to get back to you know, whatever shape they're going to be in after uh, the children. So once you have the, all that together, uh, then it's a great time to come in and we can talk about a mommy makeover. All right, next question. Ah, this is a good one. Um, will lip fillers leave a bump in your mouth? Well, the short answer is no, they shouldn't. If they are done properly and you don't have an extra amount of filler placed where it shouldn't be, you really should have a very nice, smooth look and feel to any filler. Um, once in a while, you can develop nodules depending on the type of product used and how it was placed, but that is not the norm. Um, and if it is a hyaluronic acid filler, which has been placed, which it usually is, um, we do have ways that we can dissolve those nodules if they do appear, which is very, very rare. All right, next question. Oh, good one. All right, what risks are associated with a fat transfer procedure such as a BBL, also known as a Brazilian butt lift for those who don't know, um, and are there any alternatives? So, um, well, a BBL is just like any surgery, there's risks. Every surgery has its own inherent risks, bleeding, infection, anesthesia risks. If you're otherwise young and healthy, usually those risks are quite low. With a Brazilian butt lift, however, there are certain risks specific to this procedure. Um, and these involve um, where the fat is placed in the buttocks and how it is placed. We have um, the increased risks that I'm talking about are called fat embolism, which can lead to death. Um, now, this procedure does have a little bit of a higher death rate, I shouldn't say a little bit, a significantly higher death rate than most cosmetic plastic surgery procedures. It is of vital importance that if you're considering this procedure, that you go to someone who is board certified in plastic surgery, who knows the anatomy, who knows the risks, and who knows what they're doing. Um, there is a specific technique as to how a properly done Brazilian butt lift should be performed in terms of where the fat is layered. Um, it should be on top of the muscle in the fat, not in the muscle or underneath the muscle. That has been found to increase the risk of fat embolus. Um, and there are a few other technical nuances that a properly trained and board certified surgeon will be able to guide you through safely during this procedure. Um, are there alternatives to a BBL? So there are. Um, the major alternatives are a buttock implant if you have no fat or you don't want to undergo a BBL. Uh, I personally am not a huge fan of silicone implants in the buttocks. I, I just, it's a personal thing. I, I do them. I don't love them. I think that they can have some complications associated with them. Um, but for patients who are very, very thin and don't have a lot of fat deposits in other areas of the body, it's our only option. Um, my favorite way to approach the buttocks for minor reshaping is what's called Sculptra. Um, Sculptra is an injectable, it's done in the office. It is a collagen stimulator and it helps, it's a great, great, great tool for increasing mild projection of the buttocks, filling in contour deformities, women who have those hip dips that they don't like. Sculptra is a great way to do that. Um, the negative of Sculptra is it's not a one and done, it is a series of treatments and it, and it while it does last maybe up to five years, it is something that has to be repeated and you do have to have an annual maintenance associated with it. All right, next question. Um, all right. 
What is the difference between a tummy tuck and a mini tummy tuck? Great question, I get this one all the time. So a tummy tuck or a formal tummy tuck is usually a incision that goes from hip bone to hip bone and you get a tiny little scar around the belly button. What this allows us to do is remove all of the extra skin and fat that's below the belly button. It also allows us to tighten the muscle separation that most women and men have after a significant weight gain and weight loss, whether it's from pregnancy or any other reason. Um, and so a full tummy tuck allows you to approach the upper abdomen as well as the lower abdomen. It allows tightening of the muscles and it allows redraping of the skin and repositioning of the belly button. A mini tummy tuck basically does nothing to the upper half of the belly. So what a mini tummy tuck does, it is a, a scar in the same location as a regular tummy tuck. It tends to be a little bit shorter in length, it's not quite as long. Um, but it does not include a scar around the belly button and it does not include any tightening of the abdominal muscles because you're really not approaching the upper abdomen. So if you're someone who has a fair amount of extra skin or looseness, laxity of the upper belly or fat in the upper belly, or a fairly significant separation of your muscles, then you're really better off with a full tummy tuck. I'm being told I'm running out of time. Let's see, one more question. Uh, let's see. Oh, all right. How long do breast implants last and when do breast implants need to be replaced? All right, another good question. So. The bottom line is they don't have an expiration date. They don't hit 10 years and your breast implants explode, expire, and you have to remove them. If you're not having any issues, you don't have to remove them. That being said, they are not meant to be permanent devices. They are a prosthetic implant that is put in the body. They can rupture, they can leak, you can develop scar tissue around them, all sorts of things can happen. But they don't have an expiration date. So what I tell my patients is, the newer generations, the implants that we are using today are so much more durable than the implants we had 20 years ago. Um, they do last very long, they're very durable, they're really good, but they are, like I said, not meant to be permanent devices. But you don't have to replace them if you're not having any issues with them. All right. Um, I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you guys for all your questions. Let me know if you like this format, if you'd rather that I did one question, more in-depth explanation as opposed to rapid fire questions. Um, you can follow us please on at Chicago Dermatology and at Dr. Nikki Christopoulos and we'll do this again. Okay, thanks everyone, have a great day.